Welcome to TD Cat Tech and a quick note at the start of this video for those of you who really like scientific tests and really like things done in a very orderly fashion using benchmarking tools and all that kind of thing then don't please watch this video this is just me messing around I guess I'm aiming this at the kind of people who are happy to just sort of transfer a file across their computer and go oh that was quite quick yeah I wonder what, what difference it makes if I do it from this drive to this drive mm -hmm. That's about as far as we're going, okay? Anyway, I'm looking today at uh, NVMe, so M2 storage. This is part of my project PC build for uh, 2018, and um, I really haven't used NVMe much in the past. One, It's one of the first times, or it is the first time I've built it into my main desktop PC, and uh, I just wanted to run through a couple of sort of tech checks today. For those of you who don't know, the whole idea with NVMe is that uh, it connects directly into your motherboard on a different interface than hard standard hard drives. So when SSD drives first came along, they were they're all connected via the same interface as hard drives, and that has with come you know with that comes certain limitations that didn't really matter with spinning hard drives because they couldn't run that fast anyway. But when you're talking about sort of um, non-volatile memory, you can access that in a much much more sort of paralleled way, much more direct way. Um, than, uh, than you can on a normal hard drive. So to take advantage of that, they've gone, well, okay, we're gonna do away with those old interfaces. We're gonna now give that type of hard drive, so SS, hard drive, that type of storage, a um, new interface. And that's what NVMe is all about. So how well does it work? Well, let's take a look at it. So what I'm gonna do, um, I'm kind of, this is, I'm gonna sort of wing this really. What I've got here, first of all, so um, by the way, the, the, the only thing I have tried to do to improve this is capture onto a completely separate drive. So the drive I'm capturing this video on is, um, is different than all the ones I'm going to be running tests on, but it is still going to affect things, the fact I'm capturing video on the same computer. So if I go to here, then I've got this file here, JB, that's a film, and it's 62 gigabytes. This is currently sat on a spinning drive. So what I'm going to do with this is copy this across. I'm going to copy this across, actually, to my uh, desktop, I think. I'm going to just dump it across to my desktop. And so this is now copying going from a spinning drive, so reading from a spinning drive and writing to an NVMe drive, which is, but it is my operating system NVMe drive. So let's see what kind of speeds we get doing that. This is, remember, a 62 gigabyte file, so pretty massive file, but it is one continuous file, which makes things a lot simpler. You know, it just can do a continuous read of that file. All right, so if I'm, you know, zoom in on this, this, um, transfer window, you can see that it's running at about 150 megabytes per second. And that's actually not too bad for a spinning hard drive. If I bring up the task manager now and go to performance and where's that drive? So, so here's that drive. This is the drive that it's currently writing to. The drive that it's, no, sorry, the drive that it's reading from is this one. And it actually let me bring that window onto the capture area here. Uh, should try and move things across a bit so you can see all of this. No, right. okay. Zoom out. Yep, good. Sorted. And as, according to this, this is kind of utilising pretty much 100%. It's saying well, I'm doing 150 megabytes per second, and you're not going to get any better than that. So, yep, yeah, I'm doing my best. My active time is 98%. Uh, so which drive am I actually writing to? Well, I'm actually writing to this one. And this is the um, Samsung SSD 960 Pro. So this is, this is I think this is version 1.2 of NVMe. I also have um, the, um, a separate disk, where is it? Drive disk K here, that is actually a version 1.3 and I'll be testing that one in a second. So I won't let you sit through all of this. I'll spin through this now because this is clearly going to take at least another five minutes to copy this. So, yeah. But you can see that this is not really having any trouble at all. It's like going, right, okay. Oh, you're writing something to me, to me are you? Yeah, okay. All right, yeah, I'll have that. Uh, oh, yeah. No. What? Oh, sorry. Yeah, you had to wake me up there. So you can see that the transfer rates reading from a spinning drive and writing to an NVMe well, there's, um, <laughs> this, the NVMe is not doing anything really, is it? Anyway, let's spin on. So 
while this just approaches the end, it's a great continuous speed. Uh, it's certainly not messing around. It's um, it's not sort of gut jump bumping up and down. It's not glitching. Um, it's continuous, but it just can't provide the data fast enough. NVMe's been around for ages, by the way. This is nothing new. I mean, this this first was a, around kind of five, six, seven years ago, and um, it's just. It's becoming fairly commonplace as the main operating system driver in most laptops. And, and that's a good thing, I think, because clearly this shows that hard, spinning hard drives has have some limitations. Anyway, the next one I want to do, um, I want to now shift that file that we've copied over to NVMe, and I want to move that onto this drive here. So this is now, uh, so we're now on desktop, and so we're now moving from this drive, so we're now moving from a an NVMe to an NVMe, and the one we're writing to is actually a higher spec NVMe. So I would expect some pretty serious speeds here. So let's give that one a go. And some people may say, yeah, it's cached and all that, but um, not that not the case really. I don't think for a file of this size. Uh, let's let's go for it anyway. See how we see what we get. So you can see there that we're getting a continuous 1.7, 1.8 gigabytes per second. Gigabytes, but not gigabits per second, gigabytes per second. And if we bring this on quickly, our disk K says it's writing at 76% oh, active, something like that. And that same file there that took over five minutes has just completed in what 30 seconds less than that maybe i mean that's the raw speed and the raw power of mvme it it really is incredibly it is blazingly fast um so how does it perform with multiple files because transferring one massive file is all very well but let's try something with multiple files so i thought if i can go to that same folder and i go to games here steam and I go to P if I just transfer my whole PCARS folder, that's got it's got about two thousand seven hundred files in. I don't think I'll do them all, but um, let's see how that how well that transfers over. So first of all, I'll do the same again. I'll copy that to my desktop. Can't really see what I'm doing here. I'm going to just copy those across to my desktop and let's see how long this takes with multiple. So lots lots of smaller files now we're doing. So now, you know. I mean, you really see the, that the spinning drive struggles in this kind of situation. Because unless you've got really some long, some lengthy big files, when it actually does manage to start getting back up to speed again, you start seeing these drops as it, ha as it has to kind of move across the disk. That makes sense, perfect sense. And never in the past would 100 megabytes per second have been a bad transfer speed. But in comparison, yeah, it's pretty old technology now. Reliable, cheap per gigabyte, but old. Well, I think I'll probably do the, the outro of this video while this is transferring. Because what I really want to say on this video um, is that Although the raw performance of NVMe is, is excellent, in reality, the differences you'll see will be negligible, particularly if you're moving from SSD to NVMe. If you're, if you, let's say you've got some games on SSD and you're putting them onto NVMe and you're, if you don't expect this massive improvement because there are, there's so many other things to factor in. And, you know, it, you, you just won't see those those big improvements. I promise you, you'll be, you'll be di a bit disappointed in that. You might shave a few seconds off an operating system boot time, but it's not going to be that much compared to SSD. If you're moving your games particularly, I say games because they are generally a lot of smaller files, a lot of things loading continuously, particularly drawing gameplay. And uh, if you're moving those from a spinning hard drive, to NVMe, then you're start, going to start seeing some serious differences, particularly in game load times and stuff. But overall, it's not all, you know, 
for a lot of things that you're doing, 150 megabytes per second can be sufficient. If you're reading a lot of tracks of 4K video, that's where really NVMe is going to come in. You know, when you're going to be able to read from solid state devices, uh, you know, if you have four tracks of red footage or even just four tracks of standard 4K footage and you're, you, you're going to want to read those off at however many megabytes per second, that's when you're really going to start to see the benefits of these sort of transfers. This actually hasn't done as bad as I thought, considering the number of files. I, I was expecting it to do a bit worse. But let's just see how this does copying across to the NVMe drive. Yeah, at the end, we've got some smaller files at the end here, and it's now dropped to 50 megabytes per second. Okay. So let's copy that folder across to... I'm going to have a load of junk copied across, aren't I? Let's now move that folder across to so i'm now going again from mvme to mvme small files smallish files let's do a copy on that and we're done and yes, I, I know some people, again, I'll, I'll probably stress, will say, yeah, some of that stuff's already been put into memory because you've transferred it already. And there might be elements of that involved, but it's quite, quite a lot of data there. So, yeah, I don't think that's going to be the case for the full lot. Because uh, I know that if you transfer stuff, particularly from spinning, you see this kind of unrealistic bump at the start of the transfer, but not throughout a whole 60 gigabyte transfer. There we go. There's two small files. That's it. But for a final one, if you're still with me at this stage of the video, then uh, I appreciate it. And you must be similar to me. You must be just like kind of geeking out on these kind of things because, well, hey, what's wrong with that? It's a good thing. And uh, let's have a go at putting... Da -da -da -da. Oh, yeah, I was going to transfer it from... Um, I was, yeah, I was going to transfer the file. So I'll transfer it from NVMe onto a standard, pretty standard solid state drive. So this isn't anything flash, this drive. This is just a um, Ultra Plus, a SanDisk Ultra Plus. It's a few years old now. It hasn't been kind of had a full full um, secure arrays for, an, for ever, really. So let's kind of see what speeds we get off this. So there's our buffer. You see that little bit at the start there? That's the section that would perform as you would expect it to. Uh, sorry, that, um, as you wouldn't expect it to. So that's the kind of peak bit that you often get. And now we've got our sustained transfer rate. That's not too bad. 440 megabytes per second, but a considerable amount less. And if you look at this, this is now saying, well, I'm, I'm giving you 96% of my uh, time here. A considerable amount less than the MV NVMe. So yeah, with better SSD drives, you'll see this bump up to kind of 600, maybe six, 700 megabytes per second, but you will not get the kind of sustained transfer rates of two gigabytes per second, as we were just seeing there with the, um, with the NVMe storage. So yeah, I just wanted to have a quick play around, show you that if you're interested in that, I don't know if you're not, then you know what to do. Give this video a thumbs down as people always say on YouTube. There's a quick look at NVMe storage and just my investigations into how differently it performs to, to SSD and standard spinning hard drives on Project PC. So on the PC I've just uh, been building. Uh, the two drives that I'm using, by the way, are linked in the description. The two, the, sorry, the two NVMe drives that I'm using are linked in the description below if you want to take a look at those. But thank you very much for watching and uh, appreciate any comments on uh, your thoughts on NVMe and uh, whether you use it, whether you see if it makes a difference or not. Uh, but thanks for watching. See you soon. Bye.